So, Uwe Kruger, please. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir John and Howard presented you with the transformational approach that they led over the last couple of years and that resulted in the achievements uh, we celebrate today. Clearly, as can be seen, uh, the necessity was from the very beginning both to have the micro, the micro and the macro in, in view with regard to the vision, starting with health and safety, starting with the regulatory environment to get things done, but clearly taking care of innovation in detail as well. And as I said before, uh, today in our discussion, there are three major topics which come to mind when I think about what has been achieved. It is about innovation, it is about collaboration, and it is about a truly holistic approach to a challenge as we faced it in Stratford in turning, as Howard said, a derelict site and do the remediation of something that was clearly a social hotspot of epic dimension into something which is now going to be a thriving community. You have seen one of those pictures before. Let me show you another one. That's how we started. That was the situation on the site. Things like a pile of rusting fridges we were confronted with, heavily contaminated soil uh, that needed to be addressed with the most sophisticated and state-of-the-art methods of engineering. Again, the vision Sir John uh, pointed out uh, was crucial at the very beginning. It was not just dealing with contaminated soil. It was in approaching that in a way that we not just dump the soil in a landfill, but have a soil clinic, use uh, modern biosciences to actually reuse 90% of the soil. And this whole approach, this whole holistic approach to sustainability leads to the celebrations. The music is fitting very well to that, I think. Now, I think if you look at the community, how we are going to leave uh, the Olympic Park after the games, it is clearly with 250 hectares, the largest urban park development that has been undertaken for the last 150 years in Europe. And I guess it's obvious how that translates. This brownfield remediation experience translates in what we see as an interest emerging worldwide, how this experience now can be used elsewhere. And it's clear also from a UK perspective, I guess, that many communities here in the UK now are kind of envying Stratford for the living environment that has been created. Let me add just uh, what the borough of Newham, as can be seen on the webpage surrounding the area, expects as a result. Talking about socioeconomic influence of a successful inner city development. Just quoting here, by 2025, the expectation is that uh, 22 billion sterling will be invested, that 35,000 new homes will be built, 100,000 new jobs being created. It's probably a rather optimistic view of what can be done, but still shows the optimism that can be generated out of making a change in a dysfunctional area of a major city and turning it to something uh, that is truly stunning for the near future. Now, why is that so relevant? We have heard the statistics about these challenges on a worldwide basis a couple of times today. Let me just remind you on kind of the basic figures that we are dealing with on this planet. 65% of the world's population will live in urban areas in 2040. We have crossed the 50% point already two years ago. The global population will continue to grow enormous challenges with regard to energy supply, with regard to water supply, probably an even larger challenge than creating a low carbon environment 
will be the accessibility of clean water for these metropolis in the future. And let's be clear, the migration happens into quote-unquote the old centers of the world. It's not the rare occasions of the master plan cities where we can start with a greenfield approach. It's the Stratford challenge that we are facing, be it in India, be it in China, be it in the United States. If you look at uh, a project that is currently going into a large RFP, uh, the, the restructuring remediation of the old San Francisco Harbor site, if you look at the Docklands in Lisbon, if you look, for example, at Baku. I mentioned that earlier today, really one to one a comparison of uh, what we have faced, we've been faced with here in London. Uh, called the Black City in Baku, area similar size, 250 hectares approximately, where the um, oil and gas industry had refineries and processing factories. That has to be converted into what uh, President Aliyev calls the White City in Baku. This is exactly one to one an approach where, and as on Sir John said this moment, where it's not kind of taking every concept like a master plan and putting it to Baku. It's about listening carefully what the vision of that city is, but making sure that we learn from the experiences with regard to collaboration within the supply chain between architects, between designers, between the construction industry, maneuvering in the right and sensitive way with regard to the stakeholder management in the city of Baku, and making sure that at the end we produce the art of the possible with regard to the framework conditions we as engineer find on the ground there, and hopefully making something equally stunning happen uh, compared to what collectively we could achieve here in London. Let me go a little bit quicker over those slides. It's just a reminder of the immense challenge we've been facing uh, as uh, the construction engineering industry on the basis of 200 years industrial activity on the site and, uh, and clearly making sure that our approach, and that's what I call the holistic one, is, has involved not only engineering and geotech experience, but also biologists, environmental scientists, all came together under the vision Sir John and Howard put in front of us as an industry and made sure that something like the Olympic Park was possible afterwards. Important is, in order to do that right, you need to have a workforce that has this expertise. Not one single company can do it. It was the whole supply chain, the whole expertise of the UK engineering and construction industry that came together successfully here. But it's clearly also an ethnical diverse workforce that we put in action there that made sure that the best and the brightest contributed to the innovative solutions we were asked to come up with. And now, clearly the centerpiece, the Olympic Park, that hopefully most of you have enjoyed seeing and walking um, and seeing uh, athletic competitions. This uh, is clearly the amazing spectacle that we celebrate today. But success will be judged by what happens next. And that's, uh, I think, where as an industry, we are equally proud to be involved, this, involved in. A company like Atkins, uh, as we have uh, disclosed today, we've been asked by the London Legacy Development Corporation to take the lead in the removal of all temporary structures and conversion of the permanent venues, uh, infrastructure and landscape into legacy mode. And again, the whole supply chain industry will contribute to that. And uh, I think that makes us proud. That gives us, as I said, this launch pad to take these experiences and to export them internationally. And if I may say, I learned from Lord Green yesterday, we do that on the basis of uh, a pretty good performance of our UK athletes in these competitions. If we look at the medal statistics, and it's interesting, Lord Green reminded me that we probably should be number one in the statistics because we have the most gold medals per capita 
now in the UK. And on that note, we are very optimistic for the time to come. Thank you very much.